Look at so I guess what walk what forty walk fifty for myself. Now I guess here we are on twenty second of August on Arthur's seat. Doing the same walks that I did what stupidly in the winter. Uh, as ever there's a lot of people about. Uh, back in the Edinburgh Festival, it's quite warm, it's a slight breeze, but here we are, myself and Danica. Uh, sorry, I'm never pronounced it sure how. Is it Anik or Anik? Anika, right. As in the TV presenter circa 1983. Yes, got it. And the uh, treasure hunt, which should definitely shows my age. Uh, I'm all, uh, just when you said the talk, when you were talking about Mar Marike, so I'm, I'm just, uh, for me to get Dutch and Flemish names is always quite difficult. Marike. I appreciate my own accent is never the greatest, even if it is really a hodgepodge of, uh, well, it's a hodgepodge of Scottish East Coast. Funny thing about walking on this sort of terrain. Uh, so when I first did it, it actually felt horrendous. It felt awful. It really did feel painful. But I think the more it's like as we, you don't really notice it now. Saying that it was about four degrees when I first did it. <laughs> well, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think um, because I've been walking through a lot of mud and so on, then. I uh, just kind of, I'm walking past all these people and I'm pretending that this isn't painful or uncomfortable and it was only the first few walks anyway so I'm I'm like it's nothing to see here just do de do admittedly uh, I did have very very loud music playing um, I think it was something like Idlewild or The Laughing Tens that were totally blaring in my ears full blast I couldn't hear anything, which is probably just as well. Uh, but it's going to be a perfect day for a nice walk. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. Um, but yeah, when I first did this, it was like snow on the snows on the peaks. You had uh, you could definitely feel the ice melting. Um, when we get round the corner and onto some of the dirt trails and leading up a bit, it was uh, it wasn't good. But it was funny. I'm glad I did it. Part, but then I think a lot of it was down to my own nerves yeah. because I was unsure of. I wanted to hide in the crowd, so to speak. Uh, even here, when you're looking over to Fife and you're, yep, oh, yep, good. It's funny uh, because I'm doing my best not to show either of our faces. Although apparently, according to my daughter, in one of the earlier f uh, videos, you do see my face. Okay. Don't know. It's used to me, but I'm still amazed that anybody watches them anyway. Um, I mean, at that time, my head was down and I wasn't talking to anyone, and I was I was I was terrified. Although. You were actually, although I was acting confident and uh, I was trying to act confident and failing miserably. <laughs> well, that's it. But then I think it is easier walking as too. Because therefore. Well, I think that's it. Uh, even. Well, this is it. <laughs> The other day, uh, actually, I was doing my usual trail, which I mean, oh God, no, I mean, I must have about forty or fifty videos with the same thing. <laughs> and it was, I just bumped into this bewildered dog walker. I just said hello, and that was that. And boom, so, but even when, uh, and even the other day when I was in the forest, which was great. Uh, I forgot how nice a walk this was actually. Oh. Now, nah, well, this will be volunteers' walk. If you do that, then it gets quite steep going up to Salisbury Crags. Oh, and I tried that back in. I did try that back in uh, in February, and uh, it was uh, slipping all over the place. 
I'm not saying we would, but I don't want to for you. no, it's it's not the sort of because it gets deceptively steep. Because everything does round about here. Yeah. Well, you can see uh, see where that gap is just up there with the two couple. Is you yes, can make yeah. it. That's about the halfway point. So it's not a long walk. It's only maybe just over a mile, so there's no great rush to do it. There's no great rush. Uh, then you can kind of make out, you've got a couple of ways of doing it. Like you can carry on straight up the valley, or you can cut along the side of it. So you can, uh, I think it's six and a half a dozen as to what's easier. But it's only really here that it starts getting a wee bit awkward. Uh, because you can see here, so you're probably better off walking in the grass round about here. But uh, when I last did it, because of the melting ice and snow, a lot of this <laughs> um, also they'll probably laid down, put down some fresh trail in between that time. So probably walking in the grass might be a better option. Um, although it's not, funnily enough, it's not that bad. Trust me, it's no worse than walking in the forest, that's for sure. Uh, on, what was it, on Friday I did my, I went back to where I did my first forest walk. Kind of did two walks, more or less, one after the other. And I was, I would say, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, welcome to the fun house. Um, okay, what on earth are these? Say, uh, okay, wonder if they're taking photos of us or it's okay, we're Scottish, we're tougher than you guys. Well, you are, I'm not. Uh, well, I am, you're not, so. No, I'm not. I technically, I'm not. I think I'm, I mean, technically I'm Anglo because my mother's English. Uh -huh. So, it uh, you know, makes you wonder what the definition of being truly Scottish actually is. You're We're born, yeah. But then I think all of us, okay, most of us are Anglicised in some way. Uh, which ironically gives you the na names like Farage, who is obviously a Huguenot, whose ancestors were definitely from France. Which I find ironic. It's obviously hilariously ironic. Uh, I mean, you've got a guy like who with a surname called Johnson, but it's okay, it's English, but it's also American slang for penis. So, uh, what was it? The line in Police Academy where it goes back in the day we had uh, the police were all men and they all had Johnsons. So, eighties, eighties American slang for penis. I watch too many bad movies. Uh, although, funnily enough, the act that I, that, hey, that I saw on Saturday, but uh, was doing was an a cappella group that was doing songs from the eighties, and they were talking about uh, films from the eighties. And I was like, okay, the sort of music that they're oh, they've been listening to is definitely not the music I was listening to in the eighties. <laughs> I'm a film buff, I watch far too many. I remember, we all remember Dirty Dancing from the time because it was a massive hit. It was, it was the biggest independent film of its time until Pulp Fiction and so on came out, which gave independent cinema a bit more credibility. Uh, I'd sooner be having the, you know, Samuel L. Jackson just should have won the Oscar that year. Anyway, uh, but they were saying that the. You look at all these squeaky clean movies like Dirty Dancing and say Grease that have all these subplots to do with abortion and so on that they're kind of forgotten about in wake of us in wake of all this upbeat music. Uh, there's okay all these sexual undertones in Grease, uh, and it's not quite as clean. Uh, likewise, Dirty Dancing. 
Uh, there's another bit where a couple of um, it's another thing. It's I'm sure it might have been. I'm sure it's kind of hushed up in the film, but uh, there's another bit where a couple of managers of the hotel get talking about how kids no longer want that sort of holiday. They want more. They want to go to Europe. And they, did that, they appreciated that the times were changing and the 50s were becoming the 60s. So there's all these undertones to Dirty Dancing that nobody really picks up on. Everybody thinks, oh, there's Patrick Swayze showing his muscles and there's Jennifer Grey just disappearing into the background. Ironic that uh, she never did anything, she hardly did anything else even. Mm. A, couple of low, a couple of smaller things, but generally forgotten. Uh, I suppose, but yeah, all these guys, the band that was the, the a cappella group, uh, were talking about how they're talking about the uh, music that they loved in the 80s, but one of them was wearing a Guns N' Roses t shirt. So, but obviously, they don't touch Guns N' Roses. <laughs> uh, but again, I mean, well, shame because I mean, it would have been interesting to hear Guns N' Roses, Roses done by a cappella. Uh, definitely very different, but they were. I find, yeah, it was quite funny, <laughs> because the sort of thing I was listening to the 80s, I was listening to big, I was listening, because I'm a guy, I'm listening to all these pretty depressing bands, I was, I was latterly listening to Guns N' Roses, I was listening to Big Country, I was listening yeah. to The Smiths, I was listening to uh, Depeche Mode New Order, mm-hmm. I wasn't listening to, uh, luckily they never did Bros, I wasn't listening to, <laughs> uh, luckily, they did, what's that, I think they did Rick Astley at one stage, yeah, but the funny thing about Laura Castley is I saw this great video a wee while ago of him uh, doing Never Gonna Give You Up with Foo Fighters. And it was great, they were actually doing this anarchic uh, rock version of uh, Never Gonna Give You Up. And it was really, really funny. Uh, because here's uh, Dave Grohl introducing it as, hey, backstage I met this bad motherfucker, this, and this guy's a bad motherfucker, he's been about for years, and, and everybody here's Rick Astley. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really funny, and fair play, Rick actually totally went for it, but he looked, he, he looked terrified, but, uh, as you would, but, uh, I think he would have done the, I think he'll be just another one that's doing the, uh, has, has a few big hits back yeah. in the 80s, and he's still doing the rounds. I think he does, yeah. Uh, a lot of them do do the rounds. I mean, they still make, make, make they might, they won't make much, but they'll. I mean, there's still a demand for it. Um, yeah, we've got Bill. Got the whole. See, Bill, you've got that eighty. Right. Uh, we could go down and cut into the valley from here, or we could carry on up here. Well, you've got the yet another eighties fest. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll look. Okay, thank you. Okay. She's very friendly. Hi. Oh, she stayed there all day. <laughs> Are we friends? I'll get kisses too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She'll be on her back in a minute. Oh, <laughs> yes, pleased to meet you. Yes. Good girl. Okay. <laughs> okay. You see your dad? Are you coming then? Yeah. See ya. But yeah, I mean, you've got the whole big thing, and I suppose you've got all these festivals creeping up left, right, and centre. And I mean, Dalkeith has got, uh, they had that big one in Dalkeith. You've got the Rewind Festival, uh, I think that's up in Perthshire. So even when. Uh, she really showed my age when I saw uh, Shawadi Wadi still doing the rounds back in. I saw them 20 years ago uh, in Northampton. I was uh, I was doing voluntary work and uh, yeah, I would take this uh, client out to see Shawadi Wadi. Uh, and okay, I'd like to think what they're like now. They're probably out with their Zimmer frames now, but uh, yeah, they were still doing Under the Window Love and all that sort of stuff. And it was funny. It was uh, it was actually a really good night, which I sh- which I'm loath to admit, but it was. It was a really good night. Um, and I suppose, yes, I do have a very pretentious taste, but I think you like what you like. Uh, 
still thought it would have been hilarious to have seen uh, how soon, uh, an a cappella group do such stuff like How Soon Is Now by the Smiths or Blue Monday by the Smiths by New Order. Yeah, why not? Well, uh, to be honest, I mean, I always thought a cappella was very pitch perfect and I don't really, I mean, I know it's the end thing and. I can safely say I've never seen Pitch Perfect 2 or 3, I saw the first one, was I was, eh, yep. Luckily my daughter's got DVD copies of it up in her room and I don't need to watch it again. Except in the, in the depths of the night and in my nightmares. Uh, to this day, despite of despite what this, eh, no matter. Okay, we've okay, got two choices, we could go along that way, or straight down. Ah, oh, it'd probably be. At least we can get onto the softer ground. Um, despite what I've heard, I mean, everybody says The Greatest Showman's uh, meant to be excellent, but I've still never seen it. Uh, uh, I mean, oh, right. once this is over, we'll get talking about that and I'll see what I can arrange. I mean, dare say it'll be on Sky soon enough, but uh, uh, a lot of the girls at the, in my daughter's class were talking about it, and Is this? No, we're better off taking the small path up that way because that'll just be a burn and this one. And that's uh, a bit softer but it'll get us onto the... Well, so let's say the terrain's be... God, I remember doing this back in the day. Ah, it was great. <laughs> it's amazing how the bit that got me was how quickly my feet warmed up. I was nervous. I was, but your feet do. Wait. Uh, I think your feet adjust. It's like any kind of exercise. No. Uh, I think there's that perception of it, like, what are you doing? Uh, people will be looking at you as if to say, what are you doing? Yeah. But um, I think it's like any form of exercise. Uh, you see, when you were a kid, and uh, well, I used to play a lot of football and rugby. So I used to, uh, obviously, I used to be out in uh, minus God knows what. And the body adjusts. Um, even when I've been out in the hills, I mean, same principle. Yeah. Okay, I've never been out in minus eight in the hills, but... What? Well, not for feet anyway. <laughs> uh, I think what first time, ben, first time I did Ben Nevis, it was about minus eight in the wind, uh, and that was in June. 30 mile on their winds. Uh, right, this is a tricky bit. And this is why I did offer to bring sticks. So, like you say, you're doing the right thing, sticking to the side. Now, it does get a bit rocky at the top, but then after that, it cuts to the left. And this is where I did have a few falls. But this is the bit that I don't get, is how you see runners. Never... Yeah. Uh, I'll just never understand fail runners. And I've seen them, and I'm trying to understand the logic. Well, I'm in two minds. Part of me is really jealous, and the other part of me wants to see them fall. Uh, the, some, the cynical part of me wants to say, look, you bastard, you're being a smart arse, just fall. And I've seen it on, I mean, I've seen it on Monroe's. Uh, I swear to God, I've seen people uh, jump about these boat, uh, 
when you look at Ben Nevis, the first two, 2,000 feet to maybe even a bit more, 1,000 feet are, uh, are of bol all these boulders of all different sizes. Uh -huh. And you're seeing people running up and down them. And, you know, you know there's a sheer drop on either side plus a sheer drop in front. <laughs> so... People say we're mad. No. No worse than any field runner, that's for sure. Uh, only they're faster. Uh, they're fast enough to avoid the comments. <laughs> yes, but... It's beautiful. Oh, the downside is it's Easter Road. <laughs> oh dear. You can see over to Falkland, Falkland Hill. So I keep forgetting the name of that, uh, that, keep forgetting the name of that island in the middle of the fourth. Ah, Munchcombe Island. I can't quite pick it up. Uh, amazing how many, it sounds odd, but it's amazing how many cranes there are. On the wind. Okay. It's just peaceful. You can be surrounded by hey, about 30, 40, 30 odd people. Yeah, really no way. It's just unusual for there to be such an obvious hill in the middle of any city and we're not far, luckily we're not far from the top. Uh, where the two, where the lady in the vest top is, that's kind of where we turn left, turn right, sorry. Um, bizarrely, I was reading, uh, if you look into all this, it's okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It happens all the time. I've, <laughs> it's been happening about three or four times lately. See, if I do that, looking like that, uh -huh. I can feel that in my hip. Aye. Uh, yeah. So how do you, I mean, to be honest, for you to be doing this is actually quite incredible. <laughs> so basically we'll pass, uh, we'll follow this bit of a path, but we'll walk in the grass. See where that group is just on the right hand side. Uh -huh. Cut down there. Um, you can still see people walking up that way, which oh, that makes me all dizzy if I look up. Oh. <laughs> uh, you can still, still see people walking up that side way, but and you can just make out the It still looks insane to me, so... We're not redoing that. Oh, no. I've done some crazy stuff in the hills, but I've not done... Uh, there's no way that... Sorry.
Yep. Oh yes. Now where we'll go for the grass is we'll just cut to the right of the once since we get onto the grass. Then after that's all downhill and that's just uh, pretty yep. But the one thing that I have that I have noticed is um, it's actually not that bad. Uh, certainly you don't feel bruised or anything like that. And I suppose it's kind of funny I'm on the other end of Hill End, so other at the back of Hill End and But then you look down here, then um it's all pretty much it's just about a 15, 10, 15 minute walk back to where the start point. But this does uh, eventually you'll have a, a dark path which is very very which is quite narrow, it's maybe about I don't know, no more than about twelve inches wide. Uh, that everybody else seems to use the, path, the main paths, but I think we did the right thing by walking uphill and now we can, yeah. it's easier downhill. And I suppose, this walk here, it's a very good shape for everyone to walk, although I feel like it's a very good shape for everyone to walk, which is the Edmund University Bill, Paul Cox here, and just over there, and then there's a stone just uh, there, but there's another one that I used to put my trainers on and uh, be a very, very well organised, be pretend to be well organised for the first time in my life. And uh, but yeah, when you're you're talking about grey clouds at about ten o'clock in the morning. I it was raining. It was, it was, uh, it was warm though. Cause, I mean, I was putting the recycling out and so on. I was. Uh, um, what was first thing in the morning? I was hanging out with uh, the wee one, and uh, we we're talking about our days. What you fancied for tea? Uh -huh. Given the usual non-committal tea, yeah, uh, tea so and answer. I'm not bothered. So you've had that too. I mean. Oh yeah, and when you put "I'm not bothered" on the table, that's not what I wanted. Yep. Well, I'm kind of lucky in that respect that she isn't really. I mean, she'll eat whatever I put in front of her, but eventually I might get out of her what she wants. Yeah. Or might, or I'll say I'm going to do this, and that'll be fine. So that's yeah. fine. That's uh, again non-committal, but moderately successful non-committal. <laughs> um, so no, it's uh, no, it's fine. Then the two of us will hang out and we'll talk a wee bit, and then she'll tell us how she, how our day was, and because the kids are going back to school. Where they're like anything totally exciting happening. You've got to put an adult or sarcastic tone onto it by saying anything remotely exciting happened today. Uh, and she goes, nah, not much. Okay, so fine, so not much. Yeah, they can't be teaching you all that well. Or, well, it's my ex boss that used to say that though. When a teenage, with any, when any kid says, no, when you see how to do it, how did you go? And she goes, that, yeah, did anything happen? And then, um, what's just to say to the kids, uh, well, uh, when the, the kid used to say, not much, the uh, teacher said, uh, what's just to say, well, I'm going to get touched from school because if you're, if they're not teaching you much and you're, you're not doing much, then there's something seriously wrong and I'm having serious doubts about your education. <laughs> Which I thought was a brilliant answer. So you can have to fight fire with sarcasm, but yeah. but I think that's just. Uh, and here we go. So all in all, it's not really that long a walk. It's only about half an hour. Well, just past half an hour now. But it's quite pleasant. It is, we're lucky. Oh, it's... Yep, just waiting for the snow to start. Oh, give us a bit of <laughs> And this is again where I was on <laughs> when I was first doing it, you can imagine. I was sliding all over. Uh, 
because my phone was different back then and they didn't have... <laughs> <laughs> see what I mean? Actually, can we get to see? We can, we'll go back. See, that was quite an impressive slide here. That was, what, a good 18 inches. That's not Just bad going. Yep. I was like that all the time and because obviously the mud was a lot, a lot cooler and it was a lot... Um, yes, yes. Yeah. How on earth did I... I don't know how... <laughs> No, I'm not the... Uh, I mean, I did break my toe back in, I think it was March, and I think you can still see it uh, on my left foot. You can see a small toe of my left foot that seems to be still swollen a bit. But yeah. I broke it on a Saturday, went into work, did a shift, and just got on with it. It's never been formally diagnosed or anything. They can't do nothing about it anyway, can they? No. Uh, years ago, I was in Kirk, well, I might have said it in previous walks, but... Uh, it's only have the only bones that I've ever broken are toes, Aye. which I find a miracle based on how clumsy I am. <laughs> yeah. I am um, torn and twisted, but only ever broken two toes, and I never broke my first toe till I was about about thirty-five. And even oh, then, that's I. That's very good going. I've never broken anything. <laughs> but again, it's only toes. But I mean, that time I did get it done. It took me about. Well, I was out with somebody in Kirkcaldy and uh, I'd broken the toe just running up the stairs in her place, cracked it on the side of the stairs and... Ooh, that key, yeah. That key, definitely that key. <laughs> uh, uh, definitely that key. Uh, that night we went stupidly... We were walking about Kirkcaldy and stupidly I was in the rocks and many things, climbed, falling down the rocks and so on. Eventually I bathed it in the 4th of the 4th and did nothing work. Went to Kirkcaldy Royal or, I don't know, Kirk Kirk Kirkcaldy General, I don't know. Uh, got it diagnosed, uh, got told to, uh, uh, aye, Royal Victoria, that was it. That's the Queen Margaret in Dunfermline, isn't it? So I got it diagnosed, ironically by a nurse which had, who had the same uh, name as somebody that I worked with at that time. Uh, the name will uh, remain silent, I'll uh, kill me repeat that name. Uh, not that they got on badly, it's just, obviously you can't use the names. But anyway, I got it diagnosed, I told to just have a couple of days rest, so I can take care of it when I got off it. So I worked so that was a little bit too short stuff, so I just said, yeah, 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 My boss, the boss saw me hobbling in. <laughs> she saw me walking through the work car park and she saw me limping, which obviously got me a wee bit of discomfort. Uh, so she gave me a beep and uh, <laughs> waved at me as if to thank me for going in. Uh, it was, I suppose it was quite funny, but it's nice to know that I've been able to do the same, act with the same level of stupidity twice. Uh, and I suppose it adds to again slip. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's why. I mean, funnily enough, actually, I came up here shortly after. It must have been a few days after I broke my toe for the second time. I came. I was actually on this trail. I figured the ground was a bit uh, was about four degrees, but I, mean, I figured well, if it's already been broken. What more can happen? You got another ten. Well. It could, uh, could go black and, you know, it could... Uh, off, yeah. I suppose at least that way I don't need to worry about amputation, anaesthetic or anything like that. You just, it's fallen off anyway. It's turned black, it's off. But funnily <laughs> enough... Hanging on on a thread. Aye. Well, apparently it's said with gangrenous. I was talking to somebody who worked in that sort of ward. And to have seen people whose uh, who's toes and limp, uh, toes turn gangrenous and they just turn black, so they snap off. Which sounds completely disgusting, but uh, well, that's what happens when you get a first bite. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I thought it was the and you had years uh, a few years ago you had that film Everest about the, all those guys about yes, that's right. Yeah. And one of them yeah. lost his nose because yes. uh, his yeah. nose. Oh. I'm like, okay, you can just kill me. I mean, fuck it. <laughs> Ten. Suppose they can. They can reconstruct. They can reconstruct. One, right? Aye. I mean, given a lot of plastic surgery these days, I think. Right. Can you, you kind of forget how steep all that is and how fragile looking it is. 
Now, you look up there and you're, you're seeing all these overhangs. The corrosion is ongoing round about here. Um, it's, it's an ongoing thing. I mean, you see, see, when I was round here in February, March, and there were teams actually working on it. Uh, there will be areas where they will have certain parts of it wired, uh, covered in wire. Um, and I suppose, considering there's so many thousands of people that walk the hill every, well, hundreds of people walk it a day. And again, just looking over, we can just see Royal High School and the Scottish Exec. See, this is kind of how, so it was just the same as this back in uh, February, March, only colder. Um, and the Did risks you just keep your socks on then? <laughs> Not the hell. I was, uh, I was barefoot and I was storming through these puddles and... But then the water obviously wasn't that cold. Uh, Even the, the walks that I normally do, I mean, I'm always splashing about the puddles anyway, and just to see how submerged they get. Uh, I don't know if you have to have that experience, but I'll soon find out. Um, funnily enough, I was doing a... I couldn't sleep one night. Um, so, but then also my body clock generally wakes me up about five o'clock, well, unless it wakes knock me out. Like cams or yeah, something like that. Right, right. Herbal. Right, well, yeah, if we can. Well, well, a GP, because, okay, I'm talking about this on YouTube, but yeah, if I had difficulty sleeping through. The, I mean, I've spoken about my divorce a few times on it. Uh, yeah, there's been times where I've struggled to sleep, so Doc prescribed me his off a clone. Uh, and some, I know what Zofoclone is, obviously, it's just, it's nothing addictive, it's just, uh, well, mildly. But it's not like it's a diazepam or lorazepam or anything like that. It's just something to help you knock off. It's not a psychotic, it's not an antipsychotic, it's not anything, just to, it's not an anxiolytic. It's just something to take the edge off. So, and I mean, I had it after my first wife died anyway. Um, I thought, so... I took it a couple of days ago. I uh, took it last night because I had a tension headache and mixed with a bit of Sindol and it eventually floored me. It took a long time for me. Uh, but then I think because I'd been in front of the TV and doing whatever else on my phone and so on that... Uh, but I took it on Monday night and slept for nine hours, which is unheard of. Um, took it at half past ten, never woke up till half seven, which... That's, I've never, it's unusual, that's unheard of for me. Then, um, what's it? But then a few weeks ago, because of my body clock, I, was waking, I used to wake up about half four or five. Uh, which, if I was on working early, then that's what I'd normally be waking up at. So I went down this field, my usual trail at about six o'clock on a Sunday morning. And the ground was actually cold. The ground was cold, but it was lovely and damp. Which, because, so uh, I'll just be. Just, and you can just make out parts of dynamic earth over there. Yep. And because, I'd, uh, because the ground had been so. Uh, so hard of late, then I just, um, but it was great, uh, it was great just to get out, but the ground was very cold at that time. Um, any of the six o'clock walks I've done, you can always feel that real chill right into your feet, but after a wee while, you don't notice it. And after a after hundred yards or so, you don't actually feel cold, I mean, it's more the sensory aspect. Uh -huh. um, I think that's a big part of all this, though, because it does feel good walking underfoot. Yeah, it does. I mean, if you're to do this, I've said it often enough in all these videos, uh, that if you were to walk uh, in shoes round about here, it wouldn't feel the same, the experience wouldn't be the same. You would be feeling all like, oh Christ, you have to go this extra hundred, hundred yards, or... It just be one of the crowd, then. Mm -hmm. Well, it just feels like more of a slog, I think. Yeah. Um, 
Where's your out of this? I think so. On a day like this, where it's been perfect, and even even uh, got the Nemesis up there flying overhead. We've yeah. got the EasyJet flight just coming into land. Amid all the puke, sta uh, puke covered tourists and uh, hangovers that are uh, flying from back from Amsterdam. No oh god, are you anywhere else? <laughs> Where they walk in STDs from Magaluf. Soft throats from the cheap walker. Uh, it's kind of funny, I wonder if they should be doing blood tests to see at customs to see who's got what. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what do you mean you've just got gone in here? Come on, you should be looking at something far harder than that. <laughs> oh, come on, gone here, you've just been to Ibiza. Oh, come on, you should be looking at uh, something far heavier from here. Uh, <laughs> Not something that has uh, from my uh, antibiotics can cure. Aye, I mean, basically, should be giving their shots as soon as they're walking through customs. <laughs> Keep them in quarantine for three months. Aye, that's skin. That's exactly. They should have the Magaluf, Magaluf quarantine area. <laughs> Saying that, I mean, that was years ago when I went to I was, uh, I think I was the only person to go over there, Not nothing did happen to me, but <laughs> hey, I got lucky. Uh, oh, what a shitty boy, yeah. It doesn't bother me, I mean, I got drunk a lot. Oh, uh, no, 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 it's okay, at least I uh, never had any too many, uh, never had too many embarrassing fumbles. <laughs> I don't I know, I was drunk, uh, I, was, I got drunk a lot and that was fine. I was of an age where all I wanted to do was get drunk, but right? hey, everything else came much hey, everything back. I think it's, I think given my history, then I think I'm better off just getting rid better off with the drunk. <laughs> um, no. But anyway, we're just getting in towards the end of the walk. That's been about 40 odd, uh, 40 minutes. 42 minutes, it's not bad. Uh, I did think it was about a 45 minute walk, and uh, yeah, it's, sorry, just a couple of, Jaggies round about the sides. Luckily, there's no nettles. If anyone's who's uh, yep, getting a close look at these things, they normally have a uh, thistle attached to them, and they're more of an irritant rather than anything else. Unlike nettles, which are a royal pain in the arse no matter what way, and have serve absolutely no purpose unless you you have your somebody that's into nettle tear, yes, yeah. which I've never tried and. Aye, no, that's kind of my thoughts. Uh, if I'm going to be drinking tea, it'll be... Well, oh, yeah, anything else. Just anything else will blow tea, but bloody nettle tea. Even... I've tried mint tea, I've tried oh. chai tea. I like green tea. Uh, I think these days you get so many different types of tea, where in 20 years ago it was totally or nothing. Uh, yep. And back then, OK, I'm a barefoot walker, but it doesn't mean that I'm a tree hugger. It doesn't mean... <laughs> I love being in forests, I love seeing big trees, I feel, I find whole forests calming. Like we discussed the first time out, although not in video, uh, I think I ran out after half an hour. Uh, we couldn't understand what meditation, I mean, I think meditation takes years of practice. But I'm dyspraxic, I'm easily distracted. My mind's always on what am I going to have for tea, what am I doing next, what's going to happen next well, hour. the whole point of being, but, like, Yep. Shit out of your head. But I've got a life. I mean, I've got to be thinking about what I'm doing next. I've got to be thinking. Yeah. Um, my mind's on too much. It's very easy for because I just find it very easy to get to get distracted. Uh -huh. Which again, this was defeats the purpose. So therefore, to, so meditation doesn't really mean anything to me. Uh, I have tried, but I got bored. Yes, <laughs> yes, yep, I told you that before. Eh? Aye, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. it kind of defeats, you know, what is, I, no, I'm probably the wrong person for meditation. <laughs> uh, and our class of uh, meditation just, you know. Might send me to sleep, I mean, admittedly, it might cure problems with, uh, if I... I can do that in my bed, I can sleep. That's true. <laughs> See, I could take a, you know, the herbal sleeping tablets, I could, I could take a couple of cans. Be great, just be flat on my back without. Uh, I mean, there's that thing about saunas as well, uh, and for a similar reason. Yep, he's on a mission.
No, no, it's no, no, it's okay. The day was a cute guy. Uh, years ago, I went to the sauna, and well, you know, just an ordinary sauna, not that sort of sauna. Uh, no, no, to this not day, the sauna of, with benefits. Not the sauna with benefits. I'd be too scared. Uh, <laughs> I think that sort of thing. Again, we're talking about my Damago Leaf STD thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. But funnily, aye, it's. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much more about that sort of sauna, but uh, because obviously a bit. <laughs> no, no, it's getting anyway. good. good, good. No, there's evidence there. Yep. Uh, I've actually never been to that sort of place, and nor do I have any desire to. But I went into one at a swimming pool uh, yeah. years ago, and I'm sitting a bit, and I get the whole steam thing and so on. It's quite comfortable, yes. but I'm bored. <laughs> you only meant to do it for ten minutes. I did it for about five, and I got bored. <laughs> See, saunas I can understand. Uh, saunas are kind of like the feeling of uh, the bubbles beneath your rear end and bubbles underneath you and bubbles everywhere. And jacuzzi. Well, yeah, jacuzzi. Yeah. And I, I get all that and that's fine. It's That is quite relaxing because something physically is happening to you. And here's me sitting in the sauna. I'm like... Sweating your... Oh. Aye. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm like, is, what's the point of this? It's meant to get the toxins out of your body. Yeah. I thought that was what shower was for. The hot, I mean, does it do anything that a hot shower doesn't do? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm probably a bit too... Cynical? Um, yep, yeah, definitely cynical. Um, maybe if I'd had a book to read or something like that, it might have made more sense. Well, I think it'd be very difficult in a steam room to read a book. That's very true. And in a sauna, you'd just be dripping. True. So, I don't know, maybe if they had something like the mobile disco or the, mo the headphones or what something like... like yeah, yeah, like a, um, a knots and crosses on the walls or that something would, you yeah. can do. Aye, that's a good and, point. Uh, ah, that's a good idea. Yeah, just, you know how it's all wooden. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, it's the sort of thing that I probably need to try again. Um, See, in Holland it would be different because it's mixed so nice and you're naked. Yep. So, at least you've got something to look at. For you. Well, <laughs> for you as well. Yeah, it's something that I'd rather not look at. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, I'm like, like you, call it, you call that a cock? I mean, that's a cock. <laughs> uh, what is it? The old line in the, I think it's Acid House by Irvin Welsh, where, he, where this couple get together. And she, this girl, woman goes, um, what could you expect to please with that? Uh, with that? And she goes, the guy goes, myself. And <laughs> then the last line in it is they were married uh, two weeks later. <laughs> so, uh, I thought it was... confidence. It is a bit confidence, but nonetheless, it's still quite... Uh, <laughs> I think too much is made of it. And Okay, here we are at the, the very end. Yep, just an ice cream van. We definitely wasn't here when we no, saw. So that's not bad. That's so about 40, 48, 49 minutes. So that's not I bad. I reckon you could do it in half an hour if you speed up. Yeah, I did it in less. Uh, when, but then because we've been talking and going quite slowly, yeah. then you could do it quite easily in a much shorter length of time. But why would you? Well, it takes the pleasure out of it. And to be honest, it's been a good walk anyway. So. When our, the first walk that we did around those fields back at, uh, a few weeks ago, I think we were out for about an hour. And it was the same sort of thing. I mean, I think because we were talking so much and 